Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube. In today's episode, we will be doing a Q&A where I'll be answering all of your questions that you've asked me across YouTube and Instagram. I have wrote all of your questions and popped them into this jar. I have no idea whose is where or what's where. So it's just gonna be completely random. There's quite a few in here. So I'll just answer as many as I can within a 10 to 15 minute time frame. Any that I miss in this episode, I will make sure I answer them in a part two. So let's get cracking. So question number one, as you can see, I don't know what I'm pulling out, is would you ever do a van meetup and trip with fans? First of all, you're not my fans. This is a community where relationships are mutual. There is no fanning over here. Would I do a van meetup? Yes, I would. Obviously, I am a solo female van lifer, so there are obviously safety precautions I would need to take. It wouldn't just be a completely random thing in a private place, so maybe I could look at doing a meetup at a campsite somewhere in Shropshire if you guys were interested. Let me know in the comments below. Moving on to question two. I didn't really like that one. That was not a good start. Is how do you manage working whilst on the road? Do you have to drive back? So I work as a commercial assistant at Venture Foods, a vegan food company. It's absolutely amazing. Um, how do I manage it? I work three days a week, Wednesday to Friday. So yes, I drive back for work. I don't work from home. I can't work on the road. So that is what I currently do in my last van, um, the Peugeot Boxer L3H2 I used to live in. I did work on the road and found jobs through people per hour for anyone that's interested, but it's not really for me. I prefer to have a set base at the moment in Shropshire, especially with COVID-19 around. It's nice to have somewhere to kind of go back to and call home. Question number three. That looks like one. Who takes your selfies? Tripod? Question mark. Um, I take a lot of my selfies on my tripod, just like how I'm filming this. I also have friends or family when they're around, they take selfies for me, sometimes strangers, um, and that's about it. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I take my selfies. Question numero four. Clearly need to work on my language skills. Do you also have a house? No, I don't also have a house. Would I have a house if I could afford one? No, not right now. I'm enjoying living in the van. Again, referring back to my last van, all I wanted was a home base too. So when there were fixes that needed happening in the van, there was somewhere to go back to. But so far, four months, I've not needed like a workshop to do any fixes. Um, so yeah, I don't have a house. I'm not saying never, but right now I'm happy in my little den. Question numero five. Do you ever get scared alone in the van, especially in the wilderness spots? Kind of, but I'm more scared of ghosts than I am of people. So before I had my portable urinal that I always go on about, yes, I got scared going out in the middle of the night for a wee, but you just don't look, you just, go for a wee and you run back to your van. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm more scared of ghosts and paranormal activity than I am of people. I've never had a bad experience in my van when it comes to a ghost or a human. So really there is nothing to be scared of. So no. Question number six. There we go. I don't even know what language I'm talking anymore, but Top tips for starting a van conversion. Oh God, now that is thinking off the top of my head. Um, top tips would be make sure you do your research, look at other people's across Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, but just know that their lifestyle is always going to be different to yours. If you're looking at American van conversions, they have a bigger payload than us. Um, and also some people can actually drive a bigger payload. So make sure you research that in America, like the um, sprinters, I believe have 
300 kilograms extra so again they can have extra in their van which we wouldn't be able to do in the uk unless you have a van that can cope with that weight and you've got the license for it um so again do your research make sure you list down everything you want in your van write down the weights write down what electric usage they use etc and then just draw your dream layout and then start working around your priorities and editing that layout to suit I hope that makes sense. I can always talk more about it on another YouTube if you want more tips. So again, if you want more, let me know in the comments below. Moving on to question number seven. How do you find good camp spots? Park for night. <laughs> Literally, that is my go-to. Uh, I like park for night because you can obviously copy other people's park ups. You can add some in of your own if you find them. So it's just such a great community. And also there's reviews on there so you can see how safe it is or if you get moved on and things like that. Um, so yeah, I find that as, a, again, a solo traveller, the perfect place to find a safe park up. So question number Eight. do you have plans for a european road trip let's start with i went to spain for three months back in 2018 and absolutely loved it it is now 2020 apparently and obviously there's coronavirus and i have a permanent job that's office based so me huge dreaming yes i do but in reality, I don't think it's safe to go traveling in Europe right now with the current conditions. Um, and also I enjoy my job, so I don't have any plans right now to get up and leave. But if I did, it would, I'd like to ask for maybe two months or so off and head towards um, either Portugal, which I never got to do last time I went, I just did Spain or Italy, Croatia area and things like that. So yeah. I do have plans, but nothing set in stone just because of current climate situation. So there we go. Question number nine, if I'm counting correctly, what van do you have? Simple, a Vauxhall Vivero short wheel base. Moving on to question 10. I promise I am just picking them at random. There is one that's actually quite scary in here that I'm hoping not to get asking what the most awkward terrible moments are in the van and i just can't think of any right now so i i'm hoping i don't get it anyway what is your favorite thing about living in a van the freedom i guess like living in a flat or a house you're living in a static box this one moves around and goes wherever i want and i always have access to a bed and food which are my priorities um so yeah the freedom being able to live in the wilderness and a more raw real life next question question number 11 what do you miss the most about living in a conventional house um i miss onyx a lot but i guess that's kind of like a different question so let's not go there um conventional house obviously like having a garden i liked gardening and growing my own vegetables being able to just go to the toilet and still be like warm when you go not having to look for where you're next going to sleep and things like that but at the same time i enjoy that part of van life i wouldn't i wouldn't get i wouldn't get rid of that just to be in a house i've had my stint of living in a house and i'm enjoying living in a van so yeah there are lots of things i miss but they're not worth it to go back into a conventional house if that makes sense i hope i answered that right i don't like complicated questions okay question number 12 and again i'm sorry if i'm counting wrong what do you do to keep occupied in the darker nights well i have a giant vi i'm joking <laughs> i don't <laughs> what do i do i usually edit my youtube videos and sit right here i cook i have a cup of tea i don't know i do what anyone else would do on a dark night in their home so yeah <laughs> okay question number 13 would you ever consider moving into a bigger 
van. Yes, I would. I absolutely love this space. It is perfect for a small van, but like, I, I do hit my head every so often if I like I don't sit with a straight back I have really bad posture but if I wanted to or if I got a bun in my head then yeah this this can be a little bit of a nuisance and then cooking I'm like always on my knees I know that might sound good to some of you out there but it's not um, so yeah it's not like the worst it you know this is what van like I had at the time basically I bought it to do up and sell on and then like my life kind of changed a bit here and there I went through a breakup and I decided that I would take this van as my home for it again I don't want to go there I don't like going there um so yeah this is perfect for my current situation I have no problems apart from the height and making my bed every morning and night but there could be worse situations other than that this build is perfect for me um so yeah if I ever get money one day <laughs> then i'd definitely look at getting a bigger van okay question number 14 please don't be the horrible question um how do you shower well um friends and families obviously at the beginning of moving into here covid was like the restrictions were quite sh uh, strict so I was using my friend's house quite a bit. So thank you big up to my mates who have been very helpful. Um, and then when I'm traveling, either like flannel wash, sink, campsites. Um, yeah, sometimes I just don't shower for, I think I've gone longest five days, which is pretty gross, but hey, I'm still here. Number 15. How do I feel about traveling and doing things by myself? Uh, for the best part of it I really enjoy it um, this is kind of what I wanted to just start being more independent and doing things by myself of course I miss Onyx a lot so sometimes I'm just like oh it would have been great if he was on this walk with me this would be perfect for Onyx or oh I wish I could cuddle him right now but yeah for most parts I really enjoy it and there's always van lifers out there that you can meet up with my friends I always like I go see them you know I've got a home base when I go to Shropshire so I get to see them and um, I head to London like every other month to see my sister so I'm not like completely alone and obviously you probably know I spend a lot of my time on social media so I get chatting with you guys which you know is really good company um let's move on Okay, question 16. What are some of the nicest park ups around Shropshire and Wales? Uh, I'm not too good with Wales. I've only been in there a few times with a camper van. Um, and to be honest, I can't really remember the names. I just kind of go on park for night. So let's do Shropshire. Sorry for cutting your question in half. <laughs> but Shropshire, I know. So the bog and cypress stones in Shropshire Hills is amazing. The car park is quite like open. So I feel safe there. Um, you can kind of have an eye on all of it if you're like me. I like to peek if I hear a car come just so I know what to look out for and obviously if it's police I can just pretend I'm not in here uh, so yeah they're amazing and there's no like trees and bushes right next to the van that a ghost or a person can hide behind like you just don't want that um, and then Corbett Woods as well in Shrewsbury they're all on park for night so you will find them that's quite a nice cove within the woods with nice walks they all have nice walks um, but apparently it's a dogging spot I haven't come across any doggers there yet not that I really know what to look for however I was at a park at once at Battlefield in Shrewsbury and um, people were like flashing at the van and then they were all like moving around into like each other's spot as if they were like queuing for something or doing some sort of like dance to like lure each other in I have no idea but I definitely was surrounded by doggers that night and I'm not going back there because no, oh, I'm not interested in dogging with you. <laughs> anyway, question 17. Three accessories, for, sorry, blah, 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 blah. three accessories you couldn't live without in a van and not fixtures. Okay, this is off the top of my head. <clears throat> my portable urinal because it means I don't need to go out in the dark. Um, a head torch for when I do need to go out in the dark or like going out with onyx at night and just sometimes like see inside my wardrobe and things like that at night uh, and another one is 
my wind deflectors. I know it sounds really random, but the wind deflectors to me act as a part of like security because it means I can have my front windows down by like two inches and no one will be able to see that if they're walking past um, and they wouldn't be able to like get their hand in. So for me as a solo female traveler, that would be one of my essentials for this van obviously you know you might have a, f a roof fan um so you can open up there but i don't and i don't want one so that is my alternative option so let's get to 20 questions question 18 what are your van life plans for winter the same plans as my plan today <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I guess I can't go like surfing and like beach hopping and things like that that I really enjoyed in Devon and Cornwall. So I guess more hiking. So I would like to spend more time in Wales. It's only about an hour drive from me. Sometimes half hour if I just want to go like Wrexham area. An hour and a half if I want to go into like Snowdonia area. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to spend more time there. But again, it all just depends on coronavirus. So. Um, I'm happy to kind of travel anywhere up to two hours for my like four days off um, obviously petrol consumption etc time blah 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 so they're my plans I'm staying in the UK <laughs> okay my battery just died and I kind of lost where I'm at where am I at regardless I can shuffle these around a bit more question 19 I believe what made you decide to convert a Vivero I guess I kind of briefly touched on that point. Um, I was with my partner at the time and we had two Viveros that we were converting to sell on as personal projects, um, but life plans changed. So the Vivero was what we had on the drive. So that's why I picked a Vivero. <laughs> so it kind of just happened that way. Question 20 and I'm going to call this the end and then I will do the rest in part two, um, however many are left. So again, fingers crossed this is not the scary one that I just, I actually need time to think about. The rest I just feel like I can do off the top of my head. Phew. Do you meet up with many other van lifers? Um, here and there, like... I say hi to a few when I'm when I'm like traveling. Uh, this weekend, I will be meeting up with Transit Travel Life, Jenny and Harley, um, who I met at Camp Quirky Festival. So yeah, like again, I'm happy to meet up with van lifers, but there's also a safety point of view. Um, I wouldn't just go meet someone I've never met before. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that uh, and hopefully I'll get to meet up with more people soon. I've been a bit of a recluse in my social life um, whilst kind of getting used to my new life changes and stuff. Um, only recently I've started to feel a bit more ready to see other people um, so I don't burden them with my, my um, sadness <laughs> as such. So yeah, do you meet up with many other van lifers? not really right now but hopefully in the future i will yeah anyway that is a wrap on today's q a i will do a part two to make sure i answer the rest of your questions i just want to say thank you so much to everyone who asked a question um, and especially if you kept it easy for me because that's how i like life so i will catch you the next episode will be me in the Lake District and then I will do a Q&A part two. So see you in the Lake District.